Welcome, welcome to another special episode of God Speaks. You are watching the Unusual Grace channel. It is always such a pleasure to see you. If you have been tuning into the journey series, I know you have already been blessed. And today I have another very special guest with me who will share her journey to Christ. This is Miss Bridget Hyde. And she's going to talk about her journey from carnival to Christ. You do not want to miss it. Stay tuned. Welcome, Sister Bridget. Good to see you. Thank you. Doing? Thank you so much, Reverend Tashi. And um, it's a pleasure for me to be here to share my testimony of being from carnival to Christ. Yes. It is such a testimony. <laughs> in, and I just wow. want to give God praise for that. Yes. I'm sure there are so many people who want to hear this journey. How did somebody like you get into carnival? But before we get there, I wanted to tell our audience just who you are right now. Who is Bridget Hyde? Okay, Bridget Hyde is a teacher by profession. Um, I teach at an infant school. And um, teaching wasn't my interest from, you know, times by, but the Lord has led me into teaching because from a young age, I always teach students, but did not know that was my special calling. You know, growing up, I sort of divert from teaching, you know, and do my own thing, which did not work for me until I went into the classroom. And then the Lord just let everything flow accordingly. Yes, I'm a teacher by profession and I love kids. I love to work with children. Amen. Yeah. How long have you been a Christian? I've been a Christian from 1992. Yes. Awesome. I've been a Christian from 1992. So in 1992, you answered the call to serve Jesus Christ. Let us go back and go from the start. Tell us, how did you grow up? What was your family set up like growing up? Did you have to go to church? Did you grow up in church? What was that like? All right. Family set up is um, with my mother. She was a single parent at the time. She would send us to church. We go early enough. We would participate. We always get best attendance, and for punctuality, everything. So, you know, we usually go to church, even though she did not go to church. But we, it was a must for us to go to church because wow. my grandmother was also a Christian, and she goes to church, and that is by my mother's side, and even by my father's side. My grandmother was an intercessor. So it's it's a part of us into, you know, the, we have to go to church. Sunday school was kept at home with my grandmother by my father's side. We would have Sunday school every Sunday evening where she invite children from the community and we share with them. And so, you know, when that is in your blood, you can't do anything about it. But it, time takes its place. So that's a typical family setup from from yes. you know those kind of times. So your maternal and paternal grandmothers they yes. were Christians. Yes. Your mother was not a Christian, but you had to go to church. Yes. That was uh that there was no no option. No doubt about it. No yes. right. Yeah, that was a must definitely. So you grew up in church and you participated in everything. And did you have siblings? Yes, I have. By my mother, I have one sister, which was, she's one year older. And my brother, we are a couple years older than he is. Yes, yeah, so three of us by my mother's side. Okay, and great. We and you all had to go to church. We so had in to this to church. church experience now, at any point, did you, you know, run along and get baptized because... 
I understand that sometimes I've heard people say that, you know, you're growing up in the church and you just get baptized as a little child because everybody was doing it. Yes. And you said, oh, <laughs> yes, Jesus. So you just yes. went and got baptized and you're saying, oh, I'm a Christian. Or what was that for you? Yes, I did so when I was 12 years old. I can remember that vividly. When my cousin, she was going to get baptized and I went to my mother and I said, I want to be baptized. And she said, no, you're not going to be baptized. And I said, well, if you don't allow me to, I'm going to give you your trouble in this house. So you have to allow me to be baptized. And she said, OK, go ahead and do your thing, which I did. And that I, it was at the Baptist church that we usually attend. And uh, I got baptized when I was 12. So did well, you understand what you were doing at 12? What, what what did were you did you have an experience? Did you surrender to God? Did you repent? What was that like? Because I know carefully that you said you told your mother, if you don't make me baptize, me going to give you trouble inside here. You know, so that means, you know, that even the heart, just the heart in that, you know, is quite interesting. What what was that? period like when you were thinking I need to get baptized and I really want to do this all right from a very tender age I usually talk with the Lord the Lord you know he was my friend and he's still my friend we would share together at that when I said tender age from about seven or eight mm -hmm. I usually have conversation with him I would go under the mango tree and I would talk to him that was my meeting place at the time. I didn't understand everything, but that's where I would meet with him. I would under go the mango under the tree, East yes. Indiana, Julie. It, no, at the, in the country, it was the number 11 mango tree. I would meet him under there and I would go and I'd say, God, good morning. Here I am. And we would talk and he would reveal things to me and, you know, and we'll have good conversation. And that's what sort of helped me to make up my mind at the time when I wanted to be baptized, even though I I wasn't so sure what I was doing. But right. I right. know that there's a God and we usually communicate a lot. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. I would go to school, come back, run under the manga tree and say, God, I'm home. I soon come, I'm going to change my uniform. And then when I change my uniform, I come and I sat there and I talk with him. And he would just reveal things to me. At that time, I didn't even understand what was really happening, but it was an encounter that I was having with the Lord. So you, I know you said that you had conversations with the Lord. So you heard him speaking back to you when you yes. were speak. What yeah. are, give that, give us an example of something that, because they said that he would reveal things to you. Give us an example of something that the Lord would have revealed to you. All right. On many occasions, he would, when I say he would reveal things to me, things that would happen, things that were going to happen, I would, he would show it to me and tell me, you know, this is going to happen at this time, at this place. And for example, I can use two examples. I remember when there was a bread truck that was going to overturn close to our house. And he showed me that it was going to overturn. And I stood on the veranda out there waiting and the truck came down and it did overturn right there. And I remember my mother said, don't go there when persons were going to, you know, get biscuits and stuff from it. My mother said, none of you go out there and touch anything. And those are some things that he would have revealed to me. Another occasion, you know, I remember... He spoke to me and he said, I'm going to show you something, but do not be afraid. And I was saying, okay, God, whatever it is, you show me. And I remember one evening when I came from school and when I look at the side of the house and to this moment, it's like I'm still seeing the thing real. There was this image at the side of the house, you know, green, huge, ugly looking thing and and I said, this is what you were going to show me, Lord. And he said, yes. And uh, I said, okay. And he, I remember when he said, do not be afraid. And I said, okay, I'm not afraid. And I went in. But at that time, I didn't know what exactly it was. But 
getting older, I learn about, you know, principalities and powers and all of those things. And I know that the Lord has opened my eyes into the spiritual realm to mm -hmm. see things, to know things. That were, and there were many, many occasions where the Lord spoke to me in terms of, you know, giving me a word to preach to others, to tell others and scriptures to go with it. So it's not just like a one-off or two-off situation. It was something that continued on a regular basis because of the close relationship we had. You know, he would talk to me and show me things. And I remember once and I said, Lord, you're always talking to me, but I never yet see you. And innocently, I said, Lord, let me see your face. At that time, I didn't know what it is when it's when the scripture said, no man see the Lord face and live. And in my innocence, I said, Lord, if you don't want me to see your face, just hide behind the leaves. Let me see the back part of you. Really? And yes, Amazing. at that tender age, those are the conversations I usually have with the Lord. And what make it most interesting of all, and that I think that is why I love mango so much, I remember under the mango tree, there was this mellow mango. And I said, Lord, I want that mango. Just send a little breeze and let it fall. A little breeze came, it didn't. And I said, send a little harder breeze, man. A little harder breeze came. He didn't, I'm going to say, God, you meanie, send a heavy breeze. And to be honest with you, Rev, a heavy breeze came and the mango came down. I ran and I picked it up and I said, God, I'm going to wash it for both of us. I tell you, as I turn a tender age. Wow. I went and I <laughs> so washed like Elijah. God, I said, this mango is sweetie, don't it? And that's the type of relationship I grew up with. Okay. So, okay. So, so this so, is the early stage of your yes. walk with the Lord. You're 12 years old, before at, at from about eight, seven or eight years old, you yes. have been having conversations with God. You decided that you're going to get baptized at age 12 because of the relationship that you would have yes. already been having with the Lord and so on. So these revelations and conversations and all of that, how long did it last? Did you, have you been, uh, did you remain in church and with the Lord from that time till today? Or did something go wrong somewhere? Something went, some, went wrong somewhere along the line because I remember before I got to the stage where I was backslidden, I remember I stood in the yard and I was singing this song. Um, it said, oh, oh, sweet to trust in the Lord. I, I'm trying to remember the exact word, but I started singing the song. And I said, Lord, I want to win soul for your kingdom. And uh, that was about, I was about eight at the time. I said, I want to win soul for your kingdom. As I say, I was just saying these things, not sure what was there, but that's the place I was at the time. But after growing up, you know, I relocated to Kingston where I live with my grandmother by my father's side. We still had to go to church, but when we get older, you know, at the age of about 18 and we left the family home, I started partying a lot. Because what we don't go to church anymore, nobody is there to tell us you have to go to church. So church now becomes Easter, Christmas, and New Year's. All right. And so before we get into time. before we get into that, so you're 18 now. I'm interested to know if it was a process. Like, was it a case where you know at 16, 17, 15? that the interest was beginning to wane? Was there anything that was distracting you? Were you talking to the Lord less? You know, because getting to 18 and just decide that, well, I don't have to go to church anymore. Nobody's telling me that I have to go. So I am just not going to go as regularly, just holidays now, you know, special occasion and so on, you know? So... I'm interested to know what, what was happening in your own personal life up to the time when you were 18 and you started just partying. 
up to between the age 15 to say 17, still being in the family home, Christian home, devotion every morning, praying. So I was still, we were still under that, you know, covering where our grandmother would see to it and going to church, hearing the word of God and prayers being prayed over our lives. And, you know, so I, we, we, we were so sheltered. We didn't go anywhere. So it's not like there were things that interest me before until when, you know, we actually moved out, live on our own. And then the interest now, Oh, so all along, all yes. you knew was church, yes. and you were enjoying it. And this is this is yes. life. This uh, this is it. But yes. then you moved now, yes. and you were there, eighteen, and out of the family home, and and then you realized that there is actually another world out here. Yes. So you became interested in that. Sure. Okay. So, when was the first party? <laughs> well, the first party, well, actually, it started out going to the movies. Okay. You know, I met this friend, and we would go to the movies on a regular basis, especially on weekends, and then started going to the beach, and then, you know, having stage shows on the beach, and from the beach, you know, going to the dance hall, until carnival steps in, and you oh, name so it. Hold on. <laughs> you, you say, hold on, no, hold on. You say you meet this friend. This is a male friend? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. So you meet this male friend and you're going. So I hear movies almost every weekend now. Once the beach come in there, I know that you're not wearing a, a long dress on the beach. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you started going to the beach and, and so on. And you say it's at the beach you now that you you will you, they would have these stage shows and stage show, yes. Okay. And then you know going to going to the sounds clash when you have three sounds clash and you know every mm. pan now we are there, mm. you name it. So I get exposed now to the world, to the other side. And so I decide to explore. And so okay. from okay. one thing to the other. Yes. So where was God in all of this for you, you know, when, when you started, you know, doing these secular, engaging in these secular activities? From time to time, the Lord would give me vision of his return. And to be honest with you, those visions were not nice. You know, yet still the Lord always... He will never leave us nor forsake us. And uh, mm -hmm. I can say that when he's, the scripture said, when you make your bed in hell, he's there with you. And wherever you make your bed, he's there with you. So, you know, I know that he was always there because from time to time, visions would still come. He would still talk to me. But yet still, I try to push, you know, push it away because the interest wasn't there anymore until... I find myself at a place where I could no longer enjoy the things of the world, but to return to the Lord. All right. So before we get there, because, you know, this is this is a very important uh, or this is a reality for a lot of people, because what it is, is know that the flesh is being gratified and yes. so on. The flesh Whatever we feed will be strengthened and what we do not feed will lose strength. So the flesh is, you know, partying and stage shows and all of that. And so this has caused you now to lose interest in God. Even though throughout the time you are being convicted, you are getting visions of Christ's second return and you are just pushing it aside because that's not where you are right yeah. now you know in spiritually or or otherwise and there are so many people who are in that kind of situation where the world activities involvement in the world and and that's why the word says friendship with the world is enmity with god yeah. so you you went all in 
in in yes. into, into the world and then so what was you know what was that like did you at the time you know was there any kind of guilt did you have family members or friends who were saying no you're doing the wrong thing you know what was going on during that period when you were out in the world and and how did the carnival come into the mix all right um being out there going to the parties, going to the songs clash, going all over. You know, when I say all over, I mean from one point to the next. And I would just party in until when they, you know, the carnival started. Started with the UE carnival. And that's where, you know, I usually go. <laughs> and so, you know, you meet more friends. And there were, I didn't have any family member at the time because I actually stayed away from you know, my aunts who would say, you know, you need to go to church or whatever. But because we are on our own, we just do as what we see best and pleases and enjoy, you know. And so going to the carnival, no, even there enjoying myself, going to Ring Road, marching all over and carrying on and all of that. You know, with all these things, you know, sometimes I feel whole back a little, we don't want to make it so. <laughs> but I went all out where the carnival was concerned. And mm -hmm. even to the point where, you know, when I got pregnant, I was still going to carnival. Oh, and wow. um, I remember when I got pregnant, I said to the Lord that I'm going to give this child back to you. And even in that state of going to carnival, I still did not make that recommitment to the Lord. And even though I said, I'm giving this child back to you, Lord, there was always something there. Once you have been with the Lord, it is hard for you to let go of everything where the Lord is concerned. Even though you're out there and you think it's sure. you're enjoying yourself and the flesh is being gratified, there is always something there that reminds you that you are a child of God. Mm -hmm. And you have to draw the line somewhere, somehow. But to me, I was still playing hard. Mm -hmm. I was still hard because this was my enjoyment that I was having. You know, fun can done. Right. Yeah. Like, 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 like <laughs> Hannah. It's a, almost yeah. like Hannah because Hannah said she would have, you know, dedicated her son to the Lord. Yes. And, and you, you said that you were going to give yes, your child to the Lord. So fast forward a little bit. So you're pregnant and still going to the car you were, you know, going carnival and partying and so on. Fast forward to after you have given birth, what's happening there? When I, when I, in my, after I gave birth, it's like everything just started going downhill. The, the, I did not have any, I could not find any more joy in these parties. And I remember the last time when I went to the country and I used, when I dance, I draw a crowd. So I remember I went to the country and it was a New Year's Eve. And as usual, I draw a crowd because you know, the type of dance and charity and carrying on and all of that. And after that, I remember when I came back home, I, it's, it's like everything is just a bad taste in my mouth. I don't want it anymore. I don't want these things anymore. So when my friends would come and say they're going to the party, I, I find excuses because it's like it's not there anymore. I couldn't find it anymore to, to be going out there because the Lord even gave me another vision of his second return. And this time it was a very fiery vision. And I remember when, like, I was going up and somebody tried to hold me and I said, let me go. Le and I, I distinctly said, let me go. And that was it. And when I got up, it was on me for about 20 minutes before I really came back to my normal self. And I said, no, God, this is it. I have to make that decision. And even though I said that, I still wasn't 100%. I 
I was still holding back a little, even though I wasn't going to the parties anymore because everything just dry up the enjoyment, the, the, the goodness of the world just wasn't a part of me anymore. I could not enjoy it anymore. What about the rest of your life, like your job wise and other pursuits? Were you prospering or, you know, what was going on there? No, that is why I tell you that I eat rock bottom, no job. I remember when I did not have any job, no money, nothing at all. And remember, I have my child to take care of. And I've made a decision that, listen, I'm going to walk away from this relationship. I don't want it anymore. So I decided to be a single parent to take care of my child. Because in my sinful state, I said, Lord, this child belongs to you. Not knowing what I was doing then until after I realized what I've done. And so when I hit rock bottom, no job, no money, nothing, it was hard. I remember I, I went all over searching for job. I went on interviews, passed the tests. And they said they would call me nothing until I remember I went to a Baptist church. They were, they were having counseling and I went to get some counseling because I really wanted somebody to talk to. And coming back, I saw this tent by Marbley and I decided I was living in Kingston at the time. And I saw the tent and I said, I'm going to go to that tent to see it. Not knowing which church it was, but somehow I was drawn in my spirit to go to the Ten Crusade. And when I went to the Ten Crusade, I gave my life to the Lord. And in less than two days, I got three calls to come in for interview. Wow. I went for the interviews and I got the three jobs. No, I had to make a choice right after I gave my life to the Lord. And I prayed and I said, Lord, lead me to the best one, which he did. And uh, from then, I've been, you know, things have taken a turn. But when you build your foundation on things of the world, the Lord is going to uproot it. And so the Lord uprooted my foundation to place his foundation, mm -hmm. which I am standing on right now. He has taught me how to live by faith. He has taught me how to just trust him in everything that I do, how to listen to his voice, how to, you know, put everything before him. There is nothing that I don't pray about. You know, I really want to get back to the place where I have that closeness with God, where we usually, when I say God was just my friend, I would run to him, talk to him, and, you know, and say, God, I soon come. I late for school this morning, so when I come back, I talk to you, you know, that childlike faith. And, uh, you know, those are the things that really kept me going. And giving my child back to the Lord, let me tell you something. When you give your child to the Lord, he will take care of your child or your children because my daughter, the Lord, has been a father to her up until this day. There is nothing in her life that the Lord has not put in place. If he doesn't want it, he will remove it. And so we pray about things and so he makes things the way he wants it. And that's how we have been living. And to God be the glory, I have no regret. My and only regret is you. that I was out there in the world making a big fool of myself. So how know? long that's... were you out in the world after you, you after you started getting into things? How long did it take All right. you to come I, back to Christ? I recommitted my life to the Lord when I was, I had my child when I was 24. And two years after, Two years after, and how I made that recommitment, I remember one day I was in the house and it just dawned on me. And I said, Lord, what if I, if I give this child to you? How can I bring up this child the way I ought to bring her up when I'm out there in the world, partying and all of those things? I said, No, then I'm going to have to make that commitment so I can guide her in the path of righteousness. And that is what 
change my life totally. Mm -hmm. Trust mm -hmm. by that. So you spent about eight <laughs> years then in the yes. in the in the in the world, and then yes. you came back. And when you came back two years after your daughter's birth, you came back fully, fully. Yes. You know, God is truly amazing because it it, it, it would appear that God allowed you to hit rock bottom in order to oh get your God. attention. And then yes. he just surgically removed the taste that you yes. had for the things of the world. And you began to feel that discomfort in a very real and present yes. way until you fully surrendered your life to Christ. You know, even as you would have committed your your daughter to the lord and i also note carefully that uh, you were out of a job looking for jobs looking <laughs> for jobs looking for jobs and the moment you said here i am lord lord this is it i am serving you you said you walked away from a relationship and you were just tired of the life in the world and yeah. two days later, you said you got three job offers, yes. did interviews, got all three and needed to make a decision. Yes. It's truly That's amazing. It, truly that amazing. Truly amazing. God truly is amazing. amazing. <laughs> Very amazing. Um, Let me tell you, Reverend Tashi, I have, I have so many testimonies of how the Lord has just turned things around just by allowing him to mm -hmm. be the center of my life. Amen. As I, said, I wanted to do, uh, well, finish your thought and then I, I wanted to do something. As I say that, you know, when I made the, this commitment, I wasn't even sure what I was doing then. But, mm -hmm. you know, in all of that, and even when I was at the age eight, let me backtrack a little. I remember when I was singing that song, you know, and I said, Lord, I want to win souls for your kingdom. I said, Lord, you know, at least I want to have like one daughter, but me never want married, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so I didn't know I was making a covenant with the Lord when I say I want to win souls for your kingdom. Mm -hmm. I didn't know until when I got older and understand where I am in the Lord. And what he has called me to do, then I realized that was a covenant I made with him from that tender age. And even when I gave my child back to him, I wasn't, you know, I did it. I just said, Lord, she belongs to you. And when she was born, I said, here she is, Lord, she's yours in my sinful state. But then I understand exactly now why I had to do it, because she is a child of God. Reverend Tashi, let me tell you something. I did not have to buy anything for my child. Nothing at all. Everything was provided. Yes. And so when you bring your children back to the Lord or whatever you're doing, he will provide for them. Amen. <laughs> that is good. I wanted, to, I wanted to speak to some people now out there, someone who is watching who right now, they are going through a similar journey in life. Not yet with Christ, but they are where you were. I wanted to speak to that person. Speak to somebody who is <laughs> who has backslidden. They, are not, they know that they're not where they're supposed to be, where the Lord is concerned spiritually. I wanted to just quickly speak to such a person, and then we will wrap up this conversation. Okay. Whoever you are... Let me tell you something. It is better for you to serve the Lord than to be out there in the world. The enemy will, will, will frustrate you to the point where you want to give up on life. But once you make that recommitment to God, he will take care of you. He will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. Don't stay there and say, well, I am not going to go back there. Make that right choice. Because without Christ, you are nothing. Without Christ, your life will be meaningless. Let your life be an example for others to follow 
And let me tell you something. That there is not a test testimony without a test. And I learned personally that whatever I've been through, I can identify when I'm witnessing to persons that, listen, I've been there, I've done that. I know what it is coming out of the dance hall, coming out of carnival and all those things what I usually do, that it is better to serve Christ. We are only satisfying the flesh for a moment that will fade away. But once you have Christ, that will never fade. And it is good when you have somebody who can pray for you. Purpose. You see purpose? God has a purpose for each and every one of us. So you have a purpose to fulfill. Pray and ask the Lord to direct you. Give your all to him so he can use you the way he wants to use you. Avail yourself to him. Open up your heart to him and allow him to see you through in life. You can make it because if I did, you can. I remember days when I didn't have food and the Lord provided. Amen. And Amen. I shared this testimony. I, I shared already. I remember that Sunday, all I had was a little flour and I made, I think I made what? Seven dumplings and I shared it in half with my daughter. And I said, Lord, when we eat this, we have nothing else to eat. And I remember I stood at the grill and I said, Lord, I could eat some oxtail and fish right now. I wasn't presumptuous, but I was talking to my God. And in less than five minutes, I got a phone call. A friend of mine called me and said, her cousin, cook oxtail if I want some with some steamed veg. And I said, sure. She said, I'm not so sure about the rice because... It's food she cook and she have visitors. And I say, well, okay, no problem. And I say, God, but, you know, when we get the little food here, yeah, we eat it, it's just done. But when she came, she brought the oxtail, the steam veg, and the rice. And when we cooked that, we had dinner leaf for the other day. And before I finished cooking that, my neighbor said to me, do you want, she went and she got some fish, do you want two fish? And I said, sure. She said, I'm going to fry mine. I said, go ahead and fry mine too. So let me tell you something. I said I have testimonies of how God works. Amen. I have testimonies upon testimonies. And not only that, learn to pay your tithes and trust God. Learn to pay your tithes and trust God. Amen. If you so Bridget, thank you yes. so much for sharing your journey with us. It has been an exciting one. <laughs> and we are we are really blessed to have had you come on to the channel. Look here, viewers, subscribers, everyone out there in our audience. Thank you so much for joining. And if you do not know Jesus Christ for yourself, you can know him or God is, is knowable. I want yeah. you to understand that since the fall of Adam and Eve, we have all been born in, in, in sin and shapen in iniquity, says the scriptures. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But then there is the man Christ Jesus who came God incarnate in the flesh. Jesus Christ came and he went to the cross to die for my sins and yours. And therefore, salvation is available. It's a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the grace of God by which we are saved, the grace through faith. Will you put your faith in Jesus Christ today? You right where you are can renounce sin Repent of your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. Ask him into your heart and into your life. And he will come by his spirit and make a change. The Bible declares, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Blessings to you. Take care. And until next time, always remember, God speaks.